Well, welcome in everyone. Good morning to you. Hopefully you're uh, maybe sipping your second cup of coffee, doing some grading or uh, preparing for your next lesson. I don't get a chance to do these live streams too often. I'd like to do them uh, more often, but um, it's tough to find uh, time to schedule them in. Um, if you are stumbling upon this live stream, if someone shared it and you're like, who's this guy? What's this thing? My name is John Sowash. I help teachers use technology to design better lessons and organize their classroom. And today, the purpose of this short live stream is to share 10 templates that you can use in your classroom. Hopefully, will spark your imagination and uh, help you get to the finish line of the 2020-21 school year. At this time of the year, under the best of circumstances, everyone is starting to get a little worn out, a little run down, getting low on ideas. Students are getting a little squirrely. The seniors have senioritis. The teachers have teacheritis. It's a challenge. So uh, we still have a little bit of time left. You know, I'm in uh, the northern part, Midwest, Michigan. We still have a solid month and a half of schools. A lot, a school, a lot of Michigan schools don't get out till you know second week of June, uh, depending on snow days. Uh, some of you who are in the South may have maybe a month left uh, or so, right around uh, Memorial Day. So congratulations to you. But my goal here is to give you some inspiration to get you through this last little stretch of the year. So I'm going to be sharing 10 templates with you. Um, these templates are 100% free. You don't have to buy them. You don't have to sign up. You don't have to give me your email address. Um, this is just my gift to teachers helping you, um, again, survive and get to that finish line. Before we get into that, uh, please go ahead and check in. Love to know where you're tuning in from. Uh, Angela agrees. She's uh, <laughs> struggling to get to that end of the school year. Thanks for joining me, Angela. I'm going to do my best to uh, give you some ideas to um, finish up. Let me know where you're coming in from. Um, if uh, we're not connected on social media, love to connect with you. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. Uh, I can uh, find my blog, put that up there, uh, Chromebook.com, chrmbook.com. Um, that's where actually all of these um, templates are currently listed. Um, I'll give you the URL to that in just a minute so that you can download these, make copies of them from uh, your classroom. Great to have you. I've got uh, Angela from Kentwood, Michigan. Hey, Angela, good morning to you. Just down the road from me, Stephanie from Tennessee. Good to have you, Stephanie. Welcome in. All, all over the place. We got uh, Brittany from Massachusetts. Good morning to you, Brittany. That's a fun profile picture there. It's pretty cool. And uh, Tammy, indicating some snow in Wisconsin. Tammy, I'm with you. I woke up uh, yesterday and we didn't get much. It was We were potentially getting up to like three inches, but we had a dusting and it did cover the ground. Um, it's the traditional snowstorm in Michigan. So my, um, principal, the principal who hired me as a, as a teacher every year, right about this time, he would tell all the teachers, you know, during a staff meeting, he would say, pray for snow because good weather in spring. If you have good weather in April and early May, it's just miserable for teachers because the students don't want to be there. The teachers don't want to be there. So he always wished for terrible weather in the spring so that people could focus, get through the end of the school year. Um, and then when school's over, we could get outside and uh, enjoy it. We've got Laura from uh, Indiana. Hey, Laura, good to have you. And uh, it's now we're now our international group. Uh, Hannah from Norway. Great to have you. Checking in from Norway. What time is it uh, in Norway? I have no idea what the uh, the time conversion is over there. <laughs> We've got, uh, yeah, a lot of people commenting on the snow. Uh, Angela and uh, Laura as well, both had snow uh, here in the Midwest. Absolutely. Sherry checking in from YouTube. Sherry, great to have you. So glad that uh, you found the YouTube videos helpful. Yeah, it's been a fun journey. I mean, I've been putting videos out on YouTube for many, many years, but during the pandemic, I had more time because normally I'm speaking at conferences and going on site to schools and I wasn't doing that. And so I took all that energy and extra time and just really cranked up my YouTube production. And uh, I'm glad it was helpful for uh, for teachers. I'm 
Really excited. Um, I'm close. I have one video. My Google Meet video is almost at 1 million views, which is a pretty, pretty huge milestone for me. I've never had anything approaching that. So I'm hopeful that'll uh, get over 1 million here in the future. And I don't know, have a little celebratory beverage or something. Uh, not sure. But thanks, uh, Sherry, for checking in. Hannah says it's, uh, let's see, late at night. So it would be 9, 9 10 o'clock in uh, Norway. Oh, cool. We got some other uh, people checking in from Bulgaria. I'm really sorry. I don't speak uh, Bulgarian, so I can't pronounce your name. But uh, thanks for joining us for, uh, for checking in. All right. Well, let's get down to it. 10 templates for your classroom. Um, now, all of these templates are available at this URL. So I would just, if it were me, just sit back. I will make sure that this link gets added to the um, comments to each of these videos, whether you're looking at this on Facebook or YouTube, I'll make sure that it's very um, clear where these links are located. You can go to the blog post and you can look at them, but the value of being here at the live stream is I'm going to give you kind of my perspective on how you might utilize these templates in your classroom. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Um, this is the blog post where all of these templates are located. Um, and that's what you see up on your screen. I'm going to go ahead and take that down for the moment so that uh, you can see the templates. Um, template number one is a social media template. Now, I there's a lot of these floating around, and I looked at a lot of them, and most of them were out of date. So they were old uh, versions of Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. Um, and so I recreated them, updated them to match the current kind of perspective of what these social media platforms look like. So um, there's three in here. So this is a Twitter uh, template. We have an Instagram template and a Facebook template. Now, what do you do with this? Now, everything on here is editable. So uh, every piece of text, every image. And so the idea is that if you are studying a uh, piece of literature, um, if you're studying perhaps a historical period of time, you can assign every student to a person and have them create a Twitter profile, a Facebook profile, an Instagram profile for that person. So, you know, let's pretend we're doing um, the uh, Revolutionary War period, you're doing all the founding fathers, you know, if George Washington, Ben Franklin, John Adams, if they all had Twitter profiles, what would it look like? What would their bio say? Who would be commenting on their posts? What would they be posting? And so this will really help your students kind of identify what were these people thinking? What were their main, you know, cares and worries and concerns? What message were they trying to communicate? Now, just like actual social media, the benefit of this are the connections. So you could really get into this. Um, because this is built in Google Slides, you can duplicate this as many times as you want. So make you know a copy for every kid in your class. It is the connections that these individual people make with one another that really gets to the core message, the idea, um, the feeling of that time period. So again, back to the founding fathers. Um, you know, one student's going to do George Washington and another student's going to do Thomas Jefferson. So what would Thomas Jefferson be posting on George Washington's uh, Facebook profile? And so they can actually go to one another's profile, write those posts, link to them. If you do this in one Google slide presentation, you would have this very rich, interactive um, project where the people, they'd be learning the biographies of these people, but also looking at the connections between the individuals and the core ideas that they're trying to communicate. This would also work very well for literature. Take a book, give every student a character in the book, and then kind of you know rewrite the book via social media. Um, uh, another Michigan educator, Nick Provenzano, did this many, many years ago. Um, his class, I think they retweeted um, Romeo and Juliet. And so they created all these fictional Twitter accounts of Romeo and Juliet and all the different uh, characters. And they, they put that whole... Um, Shakespearean play on through social media. This allows you to do that without having to actually create the accounts. Obviously, there's a lot of challenges you know, doing that uh, with, uh, with students. So this is available. I've got uh, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and on my list is to add TikTok to this because let's be honest, kids don't use Facebook. 
Facebook is for old people like you and I. TikTok is where it's happening. So I'll try to uh, build out a uh, TikTok um, profile here and they can uh, even create those videos. Uh, awesome. All right, that's uh, template number one. Uh, let's jump right into template number two. Um, this is a, a little more involved template. Um, it's a Google Doc, but this is actually a Google Sites project. Okay, so what you're seeing here is uh, my ecology research project. And I used to do this at the end of the school year because frankly, my students were sick of lecture, sick of worksheets, sick of lab assignments. They needed something different. So this was an inquiry assignment where students would take on a role. You can kind of get the process here. Um, they have been selected uh, to go on an expedition. There's teams of four students, a botanist, zoologist, environmentalist, and ecologist. They need to create a museum exhibit on an ecosystem. And here are the roles of each of those people. Each of those uh, group members had specific objectives to accomplish. And the end result was they had to build a Google site housing and showcasing all of this information. Okay, so I, you know, had a bunch of ecosystems, they would pick one, and then they would do the research and put it together into a Google site. Now, this is a very specific science, ecology, biology based example, but you can, you know, transform the general idea into whatever you're studying, whether it's literature or a period of history or a math concept. Um, and here are some examples. So this is an example here. Uh, this is similar. This is uh, the ocean. And so this is a, an elementary example. So we'll go into a couple of the pages here. We're writing about the whale. All of these images were found by the students. We've got maps, um, even have you know pictures of the students who have visited these different places. Uh, lots of videos on here. And the nice thing about Google Sites is that you can embed all of the other Google stuff into Google Sites. So whether it's a Google Doc presentation, YouTube video, Google Map, all of the Google products go into Google Sites. So it kind of becomes a portfolio um, of information. Now, I've got a little bit different example. This is a um, junior, senior level uh, literary analysis. So we have a group of students who are studying a uh, piece of literature. And if we go into their analysis of that literature, so here are the different uh, papers. When you actually click on these buttons, it takes you to their actual essay. So this is another example of how Google Sites can integrate with Google Docs, Slides, Sheets, and all the other Google products. Uh, so that's example number two. It's my ecology um, research project. Take that general seed of an idea and uh, hopefully you can translate it into your specific subject area uh, and grade level. If you're just uh, joining us, just coming in, we are looking at 10 templates that you can use in your classroom. These uh, templates are all available on this uh, website. This URL this is my blog, um, and you can download, make copies of uh, all the templates. We've looked at the first two. We've got eight more uh, to look at together before we uh, wrap up for uh, the day. So let's get uh, back into it. Template number three. Um, this is a Google uh, a Jamboard template. Um, the last YouTube video that I posted, if you're um, watching this on YouTube, you may have seen it. I did a uh, video on visual thinking. I actually have two visual thinking templates that I'm sharing here today. This one is from Jamboard and uh, this is great for um, vocabulary. So if you, you have some new vocabulary words, students are sick of flashcards, maybe you've been using Quizlet a lot and you need something different. Um, it's a very simple template. You see what it is here. Um, you're going to add your terms up here at the top and then you're going to allow the students to sketch a drawing of that idea. So that's a visual representation of that, uh, that word. Here's a, an example. Again, I'm a science teacher, so a lot of science examples here. Um, this is a quick draw for the cell. So on slide one, frame one, we've got um, a picture of the cell. And then on each subsequent slide, we have the different organelles. So we've got, you know, mitochondria, rough ER, 
uh, nucleus. And the nice thing is you can add, you know, the sticky notes in there. Um, you can add arrows to point out different aspects. Uh, whoops. Thank you, Brittany. <laughs> uh, different aspects of the, um, the drawing. So uh, let me flip back through again. So again, this is for animal uh, cell. This works really well with science activities. Um, things that are abstract and you want students to, you know, kind of wrestle with what this looks like, the structures, um, you know, thinking chemistry, physics, earth science, uh, that types of thing. So we've got the animal cell and then on each subsequent frame, uh, we've got the different organelles and some of the key features of them. Now, Jamboard works much better if you have a touch screen, um, Chromebook or iPads. Uh, if you don't, uh, some of you may have also um, seen this on uh, YouTube. I have been uh, using this quite a bit recently. This is the uh, Wacom One drawing tablet. Uh, it's very inexpensive. I think it's about 50 bucks. Um, and you can plug this into a Mac, a PC, a Chromebook. Comes with a uh, pen and you can sketch, draw, doodle using Jamboard or whatever your favorite um, drawing application is. So I've been using this. If you're doing any type of handwritten feedback or you need to really be precise, doing that with a touchscreen with your finger is hard. So a pen and tablet combo uh, really makes a big difference if you're doing uh, these visual thinking activities. So that was link or uh, template number three. Template number four, do, uh, we've been doing a lot of science examples. So uh, let's head back to uh, language arts. Um, this is a close reading template. So uh, reading informational text is a, a very important skill that students need to master. So looking at a news article, uh, finding the main idea, the thesis, supporting evidence, bias, etc. So I created this uh, um, template to reuse in my classroom every time I do this. So I'm going to give you the copy. Now, what you need to do is come in here and change these elements right here. So these, my students are going to read an article and then they're going to highlight, they're going to mark up that article with whatever criteria you specify. So here are the four things that I have asked for, but you can change them to whatever you want. Thesis, main ideas, new words, uh, et cetera. And then below this, I add an article. Now you can get that article from wherever. I use a lot of Newzella. Um, I use another website called Dogo News. Um, Dogo News is similar to Newzella, but it's a little bit older. So it's uh, more like middle and high school level. Um, Newzella tends to be more elementary and, uh, and middle school. So I'll find an article, I'll copy the text of the article into Google Docs. And then I will um, begin highlighting it and marking it up. Now, there's a couple ways to do that. You can certainly just come in here, um, highlight some words, and um, use the highlight markup tool that's built into Google Docs. But I have found some pretty good excess, uh, success using an add-on called Highlight Tool. And uh, I'll go ahead and open it up here. Um, and I've got a video that uh, talks about this uh, as well. Whoops, not that one. Go to add-ons, get add-ons. Add-ons are like uh, little utilities for Google Docs, slides, sheets, and forms. And uh, here it is. All it really does, I mean, it's super simple. Uh, it just adds a sidebar to your Google Doc with different color highlighters. And so it just makes it incredibly easy for a student to highlight a little bit of text and then change that text to yellow, red, pink, whatever uh, you specify. This works very well if you do not have touchscreen devices. Certainly you can use Kami or other tools to mark it up, but that works best if you have um, touchscreen. This works great just with the mouse uh, and keyboard. So if um, close reading assignments are something you do regularly in your classroom, uh, this close reading uh, template hopefully will be useful to you. Thanks for the feedback uh, in the chat, everyone. Um, appreciate it. Uh, Dr. Mukta, um, thanks so uh, much for joining me over on YouTube. Angela is a big fan of the uh, close reading activity. Thank you, Angela.
So go ahead and check in. Let me know your thoughts. Uh, if you have examples of how you've done these activities in your classroom, if you've got a favorite resource, uh, if you blog, if you're on Twitter, uh, give me a shout out uh, here in the chat and uh, happy to give you some, uh, some attention and uh, promote that uh, here on the live stream. All right. I'm getting, losing my uh, numbers here. I think we're on number five. Can't remember. We did a quick draw. All right, here we go. Video. Um, if you utilize video in your classroom, uh, you probably are going to want your students to take notes while they watch that video, answer questions, um, or somehow internalize the content of that video. Just watching a video with no assignment attached to it, you, how do you even know if they've done it? One way to do that is by adding the video to Google Slides. So I have several examples uh, listed here. Um, this is just a real quick one. So we're going to insert the video right into the slide deck. This will play right inside of Google Slides. And then as the student is watching, they can answer whatever questions that you provide to them. So this is a real simple one. Summarize the video. Um, here's a more specific one where we're watching this and they're actually filling in, you know, the missing words, kind of worksheet style. Um, let me uh, highlight one little bonus tip with this uh, particular example. So I'm going to go ahead and press play on this video and watch carefully. Look at that timeline. That video did not start at the beginning. And you've probably had this situation where you find a video and it has the perfect section, the perfect segment that you want. However, uh, it has a bunch of maybe an, in, um, an introduction that just, you don't need it. So this is cool inside of Google Slides. Insert your video. We do that by going to the insert menu and then down to video, insert video. And then you can search for or just enter your URL. Once the video is in, like this, I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to say format options. Now, this is a little secret section of Google Slides. Format options reveals all kinds of really useful things. And when you do this with a video, you have the ability to adjust the start and end time. So I can say, start this video at 53 seconds and end it at 141. So my students don't even know, but they're only watching a very short portion of this uh, much longer video. And that's the portion that I'm asking them uh, to uh, respond to in the questions. So that's a little bonus tip. I mean, there's other ways to do that, but a lot of them involve editing or downloading and who's got time for that. Um, so we've got this kind of fill in the blank uh, example. Uh, here's more of a, an older example. It's free response. So here's some movie trailers. Type your response in here. Um, and then here's a math example. Uh, this is a math story problem. And then you're going to actually type your response, uh, show your work here inside of, again, Google Slides. Now, this is something that you do regularly in your classroom. If you use video a lot, you can just continue adding to this slide deck. So you can just add a new slide every time you do a video prompt. Um, on my YouTube channel, I have a video that I highly would recommend if you use a lot of video. Um, this is a uh, tutorial on how to use the... Um, add-on called slip and slide. This one right here will show you how to use this add-on to automatically add new slides to an existing slide deck. So you can push that out so that's kind of like an interactive notebook. Slip and slide, really awesome tool, highly recommend. All right, let's stick with Google Slides for a little bit. Um, let me know in the chat, if you are teaching virtually still, let me know. Um, I'm just kind of curious, always keeping track of, uh, you know, who's in person and who's virtual. Um, this was originally designed for Zoom or Google Meet, uh, especially prior to when breakout rooms were available. Perhaps your district hasn't uh, upgraded to the paid version of uh, Google Workspace, so you don't have the breakout rooms. So I'm providing you with a group assignment um, slide deck. And Angela, this works great for uh, hybrid 
um, as well. So if you've got some students in class and some at home, they can actually be together in a group working on things. So you're going to create this, uh, take this template. And right now this one is set up for six uh, groups, but you could expand it theoretically infinitely. Um, and each group is going to have a different activity. Now this could be a video that they watch and questions they answer. Um, this, these happen to be math games. You put whatever you want on the individual group slides, that group of students, you, you know, assign them, say, Hey, you're in group one, they'll go to slide two and they will complete whatever activity you provide uh, to them. Um, now the little trick that uh, I use to do this. So if we go into present mode for the slide deck, if I click on group five, it actually takes me to group five's page. And that's a, it's a really easy thing to do. You're just going to insert some objects, text, shapes, images, whatever you want on your uh, title slide. Uh, I've got text and you're going to insert a link, insert link. And you're going to link not to a website, but to a slide in your presentation. Um, so I'm going to go here, slides and presentation, and I'm going to link to slide three. And that automatically will take the students to uh, group two's um, assignment. So again, I'll give you this. It's already been linked up. Really, all you have to do is decide what you're going to put on the individual uh, slide um, uh, assignments. Uh, these happen to be some really fun math games created by Dwayne Habacker. He's an awesome uh, math coach from California. He uh, was kind enough to join me on my podcast and I featured his work in a couple of my videos uh, and other resources. So a little bonus um, uh, resource for those of you who teach math. Well, we've been doing a lot of Google related um, slide templates. So uh, we're gonna shift gears for a few minutes. I got, I think three more left before we uh, wrap things up. Um, the next resource of templates I'd like to share with you is a tool that I've recently discovered and very excited about. This is uh, GitMind. So GitMind is a concept map, mind mapping, flow chart tool. Now, I've looked at a lot of these tools over time, um, whether that's, um, you know, Lucid Chart or uh, mind Mup or Mind Meister. There's a lot of different options out there. Um, this one I've been very impressed with. Uh, it is 100% free and it has a wonderful template gallery. Um, so this is one of the templates uh, that's available. Let me zoom out so we can see this. Um, this is just a different way for students to visually organize information. Um, and so this one happens to be the elements of a story and they can outline this. These are collapsible. You can expand, contract, make this as large or small if you want. If you like this or just the style, click use template, and then you can fill it in with uh, their own uh, information. So they have a really great library. Um, I just go to getmind.com. Here's the templates. And then uh, there's tons of them. I'm in the education section currently. Um, and I've been very impressed with what they offer. So here's a, a fun one on um, this one here was cool. This is chemistry, functional groups. You can add images, colors, and um, show the connections uh, in between things. So really cool resource, get, G-I-T, mind.com. If you're uh, just tuning in, thanks for uh, hanging out. Um, Dave is asking a question. Many people probably are asking, where can I get all of these things? Um, Dave, I'll throw up the link on the screen. Uh, unfortunately, it's not clickable on the screen. I will make sure that that link uh, shows up in the comments uh, on Facebook and YouTube um, and Twitter uh, after the live stream is done. So that actually goes to my blog where you'll find a, a blog post I just posted today with all of these templates. Everything is free. There's no TPT links. There's no login. You don't have to give your email address. These are 100% free. Enjoy. Um, if you use them in your classroom, leave me a comment uh, on that blog post. Let me know how you use them and uh, what you did. All right, one, uh, we got two more. And uh, we'll let you get back to your teaching day. 
Um, I'm going to stick outside of the Google verse again a little bit. Um, this is a tool some of you may be familiar with. This is Flippity and Flippity has a really interesting game in it called, uh, I mean, they call it a quiz show, but it's basically Jeopardy. Now, as a teacher, I remember the hours that I spent creating a PowerPoint presentation and trying to make it work and run like Jeopardy. Uh, Flippity does that for you very quickly and incredibly easily. So uh, this is just some random trivia. We'll click on it. Here's your question. You can get the teams, and if they get it right, they get that number of points. So if you are planning your review activities uh, for the end of the school year as you're preparing for exams and um, um, you know end of the year assessments, this is a great way to review. Flippity is a wonderful resource, just flippity.net. They have lots of uh, things. I just showed you the Flippity quiz show. Surprisingly, this is all powered by Google Sheets. You enter your information in a Google spreadsheet and Flippity magically transforms it into a quiz show or a spinner wheel or a scavenger hunt, um, a lot of these things. I just recently discovered, um, and I've been using Flippity for a while, that most of these activities, like if you create flashcards, you can take the data that you added to the flashcards and automatically port it to the quiz show or the scavenger hunt or the board game. So you enter your data once and you can use it for pretty much most of the uh, activities here on the Flippity website. Brene is a uh, Flippity fan. Uh, yep, it's a great way uh, to utilize. Um, just give your students uh, different ways to interact with, uh, with information. It's amazing what spreadsheets can do. They're uh, powerful things. Tanya, thanks for posting that link. Appreciate it. Um, if you're on Facebook, you should have a clickable link to uh, these templates um, now. All right, I've got one more for you. Um, this is kind of a, a fun one. Uh, the last resource, last template I'd like to share with you is a year in review. And uh, this is something you might want to just kind of stick in your back pocket. This has certainly been a year to remember. Um, this resource was actually um, something that I stumbled upon a while ago. This was created by Meredith Aker. Um, and uh, she was kind enough to allow me to uh, share it. Um, I'll throw her blog up there on the screen as well. So this, uh, she's the original creator of this. Uh, she's available on Twitter and uh, this is her website, meredithacres.com. This is a, a Google slide deck with spaces for a student to type in what they learned, their favorites and some memories from uh, the school year. Now, just for kicks and giggles, um, I decided to do this as well. So I did a teacher's year in review. So um, I survived in a teaching pandemic. Um, I added this one in here, emoji that described the year. I felt that that was an applicable uh, example. And, uh, you know, some things from the year, I'm just kind of roughly estimating, but, you know, something like eight gazillion hours on Google Meet sounds appropriate. So uh, you might have a fun time doing this with your students. Um, this is a year to remember you and your students will be talking about the 2020-21 school year forever. Um, you know, for my dad, it was, you know, when JFK was assassinated and when uh, they landed on the moon. Um, you know, for me, it was, where were you on 9-11? Well, for our kids, it's going to be, how did you spend your pandemic in 2020-2021? Uh, so uh, give them a little artifact uh, to celebrate. Uh, Meredith did a great job, job putting this together and be a fun way to commem commiserate, uh, remember uh, the school year. So that and all of these uh, examples um, are available over on this blog post, um, which uh, I'll uh, drop the link in here again, and I'll make sure if you're watching this on the replay, uh, just take a look down at the bottom um, of the screen, look at the comments for this video, and you'll see the, uh, uh, the links down there as well. I want to thank you guys for hanging out with me. Uh, let me know what you think of these live streams. Uh, my biggest struggle is just 
knowing when people are available to attend them. Um, it's nice to be able to interact with people in real time. If you uh, like these, let me know. I'll try to schedule more of them. Um, if you prefer the uh, more produced YouTube videos, that's fine as well. I'll keep those uh, coming. Um, also, if we're not connected on social media, would love to connect with you. You can find me on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, uh, or over on my blog. Um, happy to connect with you and uh, continue the conversation. Um, I'll stick around for a few minutes. Let me know if you have any questions in the chat. Uh, Tanya, appreciate the, uh, the feedback. Um, it's great. And uh, Drew, same with you. Um, thanks for tuning in from uh, Ont Ontario. Um, yes. And, uh, Stephanie, it's a lot easier to attend these, uh, live sessions during asynchronous days as well. There are some benefits to this whole remote, uh, teaching content, uh, as well. Hope you have a, a good remainder of the week and an awesome, uh, weekend. I'll keep the ideas coming. Again, my goal is to help you use technology to design better lessons and organize your classroom. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time.